Kamikaze. This poem is set around the, the events of a kamikaze pilot flying to war and then turning back before it's too late. The kamikaze pilots were expected to use up all their weapons, so all of the bullets they were supplied with, all the bombs they were supplied with, and then commit suicide by flying into their targets as a final act of destruction. It was considered a great honour in Japan to die for your country, and the pilot in this poem returns home, and he's rejected by his family forever, after his own wife even refuses to speak to him. This is seen as a huge dishonour, because he has returned home, instead of, doing, instead of committing the kamikaze. The poem is written both from a narrator and the daughter of the pilot. It changes <laughs> The narrator explains the events, almost translating the story for us, and then the speaker gives us a first-person account of how they excluded her father. The poet questions at the end which death would have been better, to die as a kamikaze pilot young, or to grow old with a family who shut you out. So we start the poem with her father embarked at sunrise. The use of the word embarked here straight away gives us the sense of some kind of journey. Now, you can read into this as metaphorically as you like or as physically as you like, but this is a one-way journey. He's embarking on his kamikaze mission. He's not coming home. So is this a journey not over to bomb the Americans or the enemy, but is this a journey into the afterlife? He began at sunrise. So the fact that this poem begins at sunrise may be some kind of reference to Japan being referred to as the land of the rising sun. So this may be a reference to the location. With a flask of water, a samurai sword in the cockpit, a shaven head full of powerful incantations, and enough fuel for a one-way journey into history. Now looking at this phrase, the samurai sword, including that here is to give a sense of bravery. A shaven head full of powerful incantations and enough fuel for a one-way journey into history. And that full of in powerful incantations is really important. The fact that this metaphor here makes us feel that the pilot was full. Perhaps he was under some kind of spell. We could link this to the propaganda. In that the government are almost casting spells on these men to make them want to do it. Remember, we, they were told that this was a huge honour to die for their country. Carrying on with that enjambment over into the next stanza. And in fact, enjambment is a feature of this poem. The first five stanzas all, were, all flow as one story. They begin to get interrupted, but the final two stanzas work almost separately, and we'll talk about that later on. So enjambment is actually a regular feature of this. And if you follow through all of the first five stanzas, all of them, it's just one long, continuous sentence. It gives us the idea that it's one memory, as the pilot tells us. <clears throat> so starting with but so we change direction the plane's still flying but it's going to turn around we know this halfway there she thought oh that's not what we expected there with the she thought so here we have this direct speech idea. And the fact that we've included that direct speech here, that she thought, now we have this inter idea of interrupted thought process. 
that this is all one story, she thought. Halfway there, she thought. She's not sure. Recounting it later to her children just to confirm that she is retelling the story. He must have looked far down at the little fishing boats strung out like bunting. And we have a really nice simile here. So this simile, it's homely and pretty, it contrasts with war. The fact that we have bunting as well, so we'd normally associate bunting with these uh, celebratory returns and the celebration idea is ironic because when he does return home he is hugely dishonoured the family disown him they don't want anything to do with him on a green blue translucent sea and we finish off this stanza with a really nice natural image And the natural image here emphasises the power of nature. And the power of nature here to change somebody's mind. So she's casting an aspersion that perhaps it was the beauty of what he saw that made him want to turn around. And beneath them, arcing in swathes like a huge flag wave first one way. Well, we've got this idea of a huge flag. Well, that's like national pride. Or honour. Then the other in a figure of eight, the dark shoals of fishes as their bellies swivel towards the sun. Notice all of this sibilance here. So in this whole section here, we have the sibilant sounds. Reminders of the fishes. and the fish movement in the sea. And the fact we have this flashing silver, now that's something I do want to look at as well, is this idea of flashing silver. So sibilant sounds, by the way, there, just so you're aware, is any of the sh sounds or the s sh sounds, anything related to an s. So the shoals of fish is flash in silver as Bellies swivelled towards the sun. So all of those sounds add up to make the sibilant note that we're making here. The note we're making here about the flashing silver is separate, which is hints at something. Hopefully you're noticing that it's two links here. We've got the natural imagery of gain, but we've also got this link back to the samurai sword mentioned here. So it hints at the samurai sword. And the fact that we have the samurai sword referenced is ironic. The sword, he's turning away from combat. Looking into the next stanza, the final stanza of this page before I move on to the second page. And remembered how he and his brothers waiting on the shore built cairns of pearl grey pebbles to see whose withstood longest to the turbulent inrush of breakers, bringing their father's boat safe. You should be picking up some ideas here now that we're getting this theme of memory coming through and this idea that he is, we're switching the focus again. <coughs> when we switch the focus of a poem, as I'll make a note here with a yellow line, it's called a volta. Now it is possible to have more than one volta in a poem, but remember from our last one, last poem that we did, that volta means a turning point. 
within a poem. And remembered how he and his brothers, waiting on the shore, built cairns of pearl grey pebbles, innocent childhood activities. You should be picking up now that those innocent childhood activities that we're talking about here contrasts with war. Anything but innocent and anything but childhood. To see who's withstood longest the... And we have here this really unusual enjambment. The poem so far has worked within the lines... But the stanzas all enjamb. However, here we have the enjambment of longest the. And this enjambment and the lack of punctuation here, it's like suggests that the pilot's getting caught up in his memories. Carrying on then, at the end of this stanza, we have the father's boat safe. And actually, at the top of the next page, the first line has the word safe in it. And that repetition of safe... ...hints at the pilot's mindset. that he's focusing on the pain that his children would suffer of losing him. If we start to look up at the second page, I'm just going to draw the line up from our safe note. So here then, yes, grandfather's boat. To the shore, salt sodden, awash with cloud-marked mackerel, black crabs, feathery prawns, the loose silver of white bait, and once a tuna, the dark prince, muscular, dangerous. And here we have the first full stop of the poem, but we'll come to that in a moment. We have up here that further interjection or the interruption. of direct speech. So here we hear, well, that's an interesting phrase. Hi, uh, here we hear the, the daughter's voice, okay? Safe to the shore, salt sodden, awash with cloud marked mackerel. And we have this cloud marked mackerel, the black crabs, the feathery prawns. And all the sea creatures are given this extra detail. On its own, doesn't do very much. So we start at salt sodden, down to feathery prawns. So the cumulative, that's C-U-M-U-L-A-T-I-V-E, cumulative effect of this list... So the cumulative effect of this list highlights their beauty. And it also emphasizes their significance to the pilot. The loose silver of white bid, and we have again this this mention again of silver, and it just makes it sound precious. And then finishing off here, the describing the tuner as muscular and dangerous, 
reminds us of the danger of nature. The last two stanzas are totally different. In fact, these two stanzas here are totally separate. And as we've had a couple of times already throughout the poem and on this page as well, this is now direct speech. <clears throat> she it's more factual. which hints at her pain because she can't face describing it in depth. Looking here with, they treated him as though he no longer existed. It's ironic. So here we have the irony. I'm hoping you're picking up on the ironic side of this, the ironic, because he should have died. But he did survive, but he's being treated as if he'd died. Till gradually we too learned to be silent, to live as though he had never returned, that this was no longer the father we loved. So here we see, this was no longer the father. The father has been changed. And I'd say that, that was by the experience. And that final short sentence, because you've noticed we've only got a full stop here, a full stop here, and a full stop here. So comparing the length of the sentences so far, this is a relatively short sentence. And it could be seen as a comment on the destructiveness of patriotism. Looking down to the themes box in the corner here, three themes that I'd like to talk about. The first one is patriotism. That it starts with honour, ends in disgrace. We have the idea of shame and it's the more the shame here is the reaction of the pilot's family and then the last one would be regret perhaps it's the pilot's regret not completing his mission. Or his family regret his return. So looking for the comparative notes for this poem. Lots of poems to talk about on this one. The main, thi main thing that stands out to me is the idea of national identity. And that would compare for me with checking out my history. We also have the idea of Poppies, if you want to compare the idea of memory.
You could write about the prelude if you wanted to talk about the power of nature. Lots and lots to think about, lots to compare this poem with.